All right, ladies and gentlemen, Happy New Year, collectors of all ages. Uh, 2023 is bound to be a pretty, pretty crazy year. 2022 was pretty insane, all right? Insane for, for what you could find in your pocket change, all right? Because that's what we talk about. Um, but I wanted to take a moment before we dive into the final pocket change market report for 2022. Um, I want to thank each and every single one of you from the bottom of my heart for making this year memorable. Um, I, I've seen some pretty, pretty, pretty abnormally large gains, uh, not only in my, uh, my view and subscriber count, but also my belt line. Uh, <laughs> it was just, it, it's been just one of those years, you know, so sometimes, uh, there are times when we all let go and that, that's all well and good. And, uh, um, I promise each and every single one of you, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. I, I've heard your guys's, uh, your pleas and everything like that. Like, Hey, blue, you gotta get healthier. Um, and I get it. I, I feel the same exact way. And, uh, I hate to use the new years as an excuse to make new, uh, proclamations, you know, or to change eating habits or to do more exercising. But, um, yeah, I, I'm going to do the, the prototypical, thing and, and use use the the sh of um uh, the the page page turn into a new year to do just that along with of course introducing you guys to a whole host of more content more videos more youtube shorts and possibly expanding out uh I, you know I, i've been tinkering with the idea of a podcast and that that may and still will happen uh depending on you know like time requirements and it, you know, when your channel becomes this big, there's a lot more responsibility and um, your opportunity to do other things in your life um, kind of kind of is non-existent, especially when you have a family and all that. So um, another thing to point out, um, you know, uh, I wish you guys nothing but, you know, a very safe New Year's Eve. All right, you guys going out, um, make sure you take care of all of your servers and your bartenders and wait waiter staff you guys are going to go out and eat and uh you know do the thing that we all love to do uh this time every year uh be extra courteous they are working new years they they'd probably prefer not to uh of course you know there are folks that want you know want to work because the uh the, the money's good uh but take care um you know uh, enjoy your hangovers tomorrow uh, of course and uh you know be safe uh take an uber or lyft those guys will be working around the clock to service you and make sure you get home happy and healthy. So we need no introduction, just a really another crazy report. All right. Um, the last 10 days of the month, um, things uh, that the, the pedal was still to them or adding something really nice to their collection. So let's go ahead and take a look at the last, I would say about 24 hours of activity, shall we? Starting out with this one right here, 1983 Lincoln Memorial Cent. Uh, this one, at first glance, you guys probably don't see anything. And at first, I didn't either, okay? And this was before I even read the uh, uh, the listing title and all that great stuff. But if you look right here behind Lincoln's uh, kind of like neck area and in the front of his face and neck area, uh, you're going to find that this one is a... Uh, uh, a jailhouse clash. All right. It's real plain and simple. Um, it's one of the more minor ones. I mean, it's quite strong right up to the devices, but outside of that, the fields are generally pretty clean. Now, uh, take note of the condition. It's, it's really nothing too crazy. It's pretty well circulated, but the seller was able to, um, to obtain $8 and 99 cents from the sale of this coin, uh, proving once again that, you know, it could be as minor as something like this and you'd still be able to, obtain nearly 900 times face value uh, if when you put it in that perspective it sounds like huge gains and it really is so um you know take the smalls with the large and you guys will do okay uh the next one that we have here again take note of condition this is a pretty well circulated maya angelou quarter uh this of course made all sorts of headlines here in 2022 i, I actually had a blast chronicling the events of the different types of finds that you can obtain from this particular American Women series of quarters. As a matter of fact, this series has been has been a blockbuster to uh, roll hunters, to change searchers 
for a number of reasons, you know, new varieties uh, and whatnot. Uh, this one right here is, again, another one. Uh, this is one of about five or six doubled earring varieties that you could find. This one is the VDDR number two. Again, you know, not the cleanest example. You have a couple of pretty nice gashes and nicks on the obverse. Uh, but this one right here, as you can see, has the uh, interior doubled earring uh, as opposed to the one on the outside. Uh, this one is the VDDR number two. Uh, this is a uh, Dr. Wiles attributed variety. You can find it also on VarietyVista.com. Uh, this one ended up selling for $11. Uh, so a lot of that has to do with the condition. I know the average going rate for a VDDR number two is in that $20 to $25 range. So uh, a little bit of a discount because of the, uh, the small issues that this coin does possess. All right, so uh, Roll Hunters, take notice, especially the, the candy half dollar crowd. Uh, you guys, you know, spend a lot of time and energy uh, to develop relationships with your local banks to the point where they would actually go out of their way and order half dollar rolls for you, boxes. Not everybody has that luxury, uh, especially me. I, if, I cannot find a bank near where I live that will order these things for me. So for those of you out there that, that have the benefit of doing such, maybe you've known them for, you know, a decade or so, whatever the case may be, or they just like carrying these things. This is, uh, this is just another way to enhance the experience other than looking for 40 and 90% silver because it goes well beyond that. So this is, believe it or not, a 1971D Kennedy half dollar. And uh, at first glance to the untrained eye, folks are going to look at this and they're like, man, the thing's damaged. It was acid dipped or something like that. This one is not. This is a uh, major struck through error. Uh, so on, on especially the, uh, the obverse die, uh, there was a nice healthy coating of grease. Um, as you guys know, the... Uh, the mint employees get a little grease happy when they're maintaining the dies to ensure that all of the integral moving parts of the presses are moving optimally. Um, you know, much like an automobile. If you don't change your oil, you know, every X amount of miles and you let it go 15,000 miles, which I hear there is a motor oil that can do that. Um, you know, you, you're going to, you know, just really see things break down over time and it's not going to be good for your car. Same with mint presses. So, um, you know, when when the pressurization strike occurs, it's not going to bring up all of the uh, main design details of the coin because it has to strike through all of that um, uh, that grease um, and probably other debris in there, dirt, you know, metal shavings, things like that. Um, pretty nice sale. $33 with eight bids was the final sale price on this. And um, stay tuned. We have more of these for you in this video and it's gonna blow your mind pretty neat one here uh again this is a new one for this year uh and man um uh, the fact that it showed up on the very last pcmr of the year um is pretty crazy i guess just good timing right time right place so we have um, a pair of notes uh the only relationship to each other is that they have matching serial numbers uh, but they're completely different blocks. Uh, you have an HA block, $2 bill. I believe they're both 2013. So they're relatively uh, relatively new. Uh, so it has the same serial number, 21193. And then you have a B star block, also with the same serial number. So this person probably um, has pretty good luck at finding full brand new BEP bank straps or bricks um, of $2 bills. And that, that's pretty cool in itself, uh, which is what $2,000 face. If I'm not mistaken, it's a thousand notes um, in, in one brick. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty cool. And this is again, another creative way in which you can make just a, an amount of money that is not normally seen in the hobby. <laughs> and, um, you know, even again, that even when nothing is matching, really, I mean, it'd be a different story if, say, it was a BA block, you know, um, that this would have a lot more meaning, you know, to some collectors. But this is still nonetheless really cool to get just a matching serial number. Uh, this pair, believe it or not, sold for $118, guys. 
Um, the notes are really new, and that's the big reason why I had come to the conclusion that these are found in like a BEP brick or strap um, because of its overall condition. But again, keep this one on the back of your minds. If you could do this and probably lower condition notes too, like dollar bills and stuff, might be another area of opportunity where you could find matching serial numbers. It's a little bit of a daunting task, but sometimes when the sun, stars, and moon come into perfect alignment, you could come across the perfect pair with that serial number. Uh, very nice, attractive, albeit probably a little bit scarce, date, 1975, Denver. Jefferson Nicholas one's about off-center, 50-55%. Uh, overall, really nice, high-end graded, uh, lots of mint luster. Uh, these are collected by date. So uh, it came as no surprise that this one ended up selling for $84.78. I've seen other dates within the 70s that don't even come close to this or maybe even sell for half that. So um, keep an eye out for certain dates that are a little bit tougher to find in the marketplace. And, you know, rest assured they will uh, deliver some pretty nice results. One of my favorite dates to go through, if you could find it, any Philadelphia minted 1972 has tons of possibilities of finding a double to die obverse. This is one of them right here on an otherwise high end coin. Now, I, I'd say above any other coin on today's list, this one sold at a discount, a huge discount. Uh, as a matter of fact, dare I say it, this was a steal, to be honest. Uh, this is the FS-103, or Double to Die Obverse number 3, uh, in the files. And uh, this one has, as you can see, some pretty good doubling. Uh, even the date uh, has some doubling. It has the doubled tail 9. Um, very small, uh, to some quite minor, but you can see just uh, this cat's eye interior of the 9 right here, of this loop. Um, it's kind of like all of the, uh, the stuff that you need to know. Uh, you, you do have some doubling in Liberty. And in the motto, In God We Trust, most notable here in uh, In and God. Uh, you can see that doubled um, appearance there as well. Uh, 103, probably one of the least spectacular double dies, um, you know, uh, out of the nine or so that's recognized by uh, by the Cherry Pickers Guide. Uh, but still, uh, $20.57 for a gem red example of this one. I've seen this particular coin get up to about $80 to $100 raw. Uh, there's a certain individual that goes by the name of Brian Rybar that sells quite a few of these um, for a lot more money than this one. So a uh, heck of a steal, heck of a find, really nice. Uh, so yeah, we have actually a proof set uh, packaging error uh, in this one. And uh, it's a 1956. Uh, it's w the first, I would say, most most widely available date that it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg to obtain. All right. So think of it as the earliest proof set that you could buy and still keep it under $40. You could probably even get this closer to $30 than you would 50. But this is something that does happen. Uh, I, I've heard from a number of folks that this isn't technically a mint error, but just a packaging error uh, because it didn't happen during the striking process. But yeah, there are two Roosevelt dimes. Uh, no Lincoln cent to be found in this one. And, you know, you always have to feel a little skeptical when you see these. Um, because, you know, it's like the idea is, oh, maybe the plastic split. And you could easily put another proof Roosevelt in there. Uh, which is entirely possible from what I could see here. Uh, the seal is nice and tight. And it still has the, the same patterned ribbing uh, that you would expect to find on the earlier proof set uh once you split that you could totally tell um when it has uh, been split uh so massive sale 204 dollars and 26 cents um this is something again to keep an eye out for not only on like this particular date of proof set but all of them going up to the current date uh, i think someone found what a 2014 proof set that had two of the uh, America the Beautiful Quarters, um, one of them, uh, one design. I forgot which one it was, but there, there was two Philadelphia quarters in there, and they ended up selling that set for like 60 bucks. So way more above market than what you would expect to pay for just a copper nickel proof set um, with two of the same coin in there. Again, this is classified as a packaging error and not really a mint error. 
All right, so here's our uh, next candy half dollar error that is just absolutely spicy. Uh, another big sale too here. Uh, we have a 1984D Kennedy. Um, the reverse picture uh, is not, uh, it wasn't rotated, but the coin itself has rotational errors. As a matter of fact, it's 100 degrees rotated um, counterclockwise. Uh, really remarkable coin right here. Um, the seller actually took a picture of the coin in the mirror to show you guys the front upright look of the coin right here. And then when you flip it over, the massive uh, rotation. Um, by the way, really nice clean bathroom um on there and uh yes ladies he's taken so uh no funny business uh but anyways a uh, pretty cool coin uh, again you just never know what you're going to find out there this one ended up as a 79 dollar and 56 cent sale with four total bids um rotated die errors are massive in the marketplace uh, i remember when people were finding the was it 2021 Jefferson Nickel um, with the rotated dies? And uh, even today, if you find a nice mint state example, which they're still out there, believe me, um, you, you could turn those things around for like 30, 30 to 50 bucks on average. And that's that's not nothing uh, for sure. That That is a huge, huge sale. Uh, the next one that we have here, I, I actually talked about one of these on my previous PCMR, but um, pretty cool. Another one resurfaced um the seller had mentioned that this is a thin planchet but it's much more than that yes the planchet is considerably thinner than the standard lincoln scent planchet uh it's a 1959 lincoln memorial uh the planchet had split prior to the strike so when it was struck the planchet is a lot thinner you don't have all of the pressure that's calibrated to that particular coin um applied to this one Therefore, leading to a lot of weakness. Um, the coin, as a matter of fact, weighed in at 1.32 grams per the seller. So that's more than half the weight of a standard Lincoln Scent Planchet, uh, which is huge. That, that's a huge deviation from what it should be. Uh, this one right here sold for $7. Wow. Uh, talk about a bargain. I don't know if it's as big of a bargain as the 72 DDO that we saw earlier in the stream, but... Um, this one right here, I, I generally see these sell for 20 bucks and up, uh, so consider it a little bit of a discount on an otherwise very nice looking and very attractive coin. Uh, a little bit later date, this is a tough one actually. You don't see anything beyond 2001 like this. Um, they're quite scarce. Uh, they just don't pop up that often, but here's a 2003 Lincoln Memorial. Uh, a little bit broad struck or off center. Uh, you can make the argument that it's either or at this point. It's very, very minor. Um, this coin right here sold for $11.88, and the coin is in exceptional condition. Another off-center strike right here, this time on the 1988P Washington Quarter. Now, this, uh, this is a very nice uh, high-grade specimen. Um, the, these are picked up by folks that collect uh, by date, um, and 1980s. Off-center Washingtons come up on the marketplace all the time. Now, there are a few dates that are a lot tougher than others, like 85 and 86. Denver's are a little bit tougher as well. Uh, 88P I've seen on a number of occasions. Uh, this one right here sold for $40.58. Uh, 20 bids accumulated to that amount. And we also have a, another really cool error, this time on a 1988 Lincoln Memorial. This one is a broad strike error. I seemed a little uncertain when I said that, but no, that's, that's what it is. So um, the collar wasn't fully engaged, which is a uh, piece of the, um, it's actually its own die uh, that holds the coin in during the striking process. Uh, so when that, that collar is not engaged, all the metal flow goes outwards, making the coin appear, and it is a lot larger than what it's supposed to be. Um, this thing is probably nickel-sized at this point. Now keep in mind, this is a copper-coated zincan, so um, they, you have to be extremely brave to want to collect these ones um, because they're like ticking time bombs you know, with the exposed zinc that you see on this coin. Um, those are typically prone to uh, deterioration, especially when uh, when moisture has been introduced. Um, so if you're living like on the East Coast or Southeast region of the U.S. and you have some of these um, and you don't know if you're properly storing them, you might want to sell them 
Um, you know, they, they're remarkable looking, but at the same time, um, it's not a coin that I prefer to keep in my collection long term. Uh, this one ended up selling for $25 and eight cents, uh, with 10 bids. Uh, another staple in, um, modern Lincoln varieties, that's the 1995, um, penny that you see here, the FS 101 doubled die obverse. This is a strong one, boy. Uh, Liberty showing the best amount of doubling on the coin, as you can see in this close-up, uh, provided by the seller. Good job, by the way. And then the motto, in God we trust, uh, the first three words are quite strong there. Um, this one right here sold for $55.98, and uh, this particular seller, I believe, has either three or four more available at the, the price that this one sold for. Uh, one of the bigger sales of the week is actually a damaged example uh, of the 2020 Lincoln Shield scent with the bisecting die crack that you see here. Uh, this is probably one of the coolest sales that I've seen. Uh, yeah, sure, it has the uh, it was a roll ender, so it has the circle of death, is what I like to call it. That's the little uh, uh, the little kind of like finger that crimps the end paper of that roll and it makes contact with the coin as it circles all the way around um which is unfortunate you you don't want to see that and um it usually affl afflicts about 80 percent of all the coins on the on the roll end um so um th this is a coin that i was trying to obtain you know like a few months ago for like 150 bucks and i thought that was on the high end uh, this one exceeded that a little bit more uh this one ended up as a $461.60 sale with 48 bids, there was a lot, a lot of activity. There was a lot of general interest. Um, the seller did provide some really standout photos of the roll enders. Apparently, he had found two of them. Uh, one of them is the later progression with the, uh, the, the raised die chip ab above the letter E and 1. This one is a little bit earlier progression. It doesn't have that interior die break. Uh, that you see right there but this is a really cool shot um proving yet again that it is a roll ender and i can only imagine that he pro he or she probably found a few more of them in these rolls um yeah you're looking at this correctly this is the key date v nickel of the series uh 1912 s i mean there's a few key dates uh you know 1885 i guess is another one um, but this particular coin right here, wow. Um, if you're looking for a budget buster of a coin, this is the one right here. Uh, but it's got problems. Uh, the coin looks and appears like it's been cleaned. Uh, that's pretty evident by the buildup of just the dirt and crud around each of the stars. But yet the fields are pretty well cleaned all the way up to the, uh, to the devices. Uh, which might lead me to believe that there is some cleaning that's gone on here. There's a few uh, nicks in the fields in front of Liberty's face here. Um, and it does have lamination deals going on in the reverse. Now, lamination itself is a mint error. However, you got to keep in mind, uh, sometimes the lower end type of uh, issues like that might actually negatively impact the value of a key date coin. Like if that was on like a 1909S VDB, for example, that's going to take a huge hit on the value of the coin because they see that as a negative aspect of the coin's overall appearance. Uh, same with this, you know. Um, it's cool, but at the same time, I'd prefer probably an example without the lamination. Uh, some people might feel otherwise. Lamination is like a very kind of like we're scraping the bottom of a barrel for U.S. Mint errors type of error, uh, say with like rim clips and, uh, you know, a few other things. Uh, but you can see the S Mint mark, by the way, right here by this dot. Um, you know, very nice low minted example, very desirable. $266.99. I'd probably put this one at about like maybe a fine details. Uh, it does have all the letters of Liberty in uh, her crown, which is important. Uh, which kind of gives this one an extra added kind of like appeal to it. Now, this one right here, I'm sure 99% of the people, folks out there, uh, would miss. 1971D Jefferson Nickel. If you didn't look closely, you probably wouldn't notice this kind of like cut over the word God and partially over the W and we. Uh, it actually goes into the design and touches the top of the word God uh, on there. 
Um, again, at first glance, it's it's very minor uh, because it's in a crowded spot on the coin. It, it's easy to overlook something like this. Uh, this one sold for $42.50. I think the overall really nice condition of the coin helped play into the very strong sale price. Uh, speaking of really nice condition, how about this 2000 P South Carolina state quarter, uh, off center by about 10%, 15%, maybe Uh good looking coin here. Uh, this is going to end up in a date set. No doubt about it. Uh, this one sold for $35. Again, state hood quarter errors are, um, quite strong in the market today. And another big one right here, it's always nice to see a pleasing example of one of the toughest varieties to look for in the Lincoln Cent series, especially of the modern age. 1999 Wide AM. Guys, this is the one to be on the lookout for out of the three main Wide AM coins. Um, you can see just the, the phenomenal amount of uh, space in between the A&M. This is a no-doubter. Um, that also the letter A in America is uh, a little bit more narrower compared to the the standard uh, close AM type where the, the base of the A is wider. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, nice, really nice example. I, I'd say you're probably looking at like an AU58 on this one. Um, and it doesn't have like the, the same affliction as other coins like carbon spots, you know, that are... Um, uh, detracting of the overall quality of the coin. I mean, this would be a coin I would say I would be proud to own and to keep as like a place marker in a collection until the like the next best one comes along. I would have no qualms whatsoever owning something like this. This one ended up selling for $91, 35 bits. A lot of folks were interested in this one. Uh, here's another cut. This time, uh, this is uh, actually a common one. I found one of a few of these in my lifetime. 1983 P. Jefferson Nickel uh, with the cut die break right above Jefferson's crown of his head right there, connecting that to the rim. Uh, a nice high-end example as well. This one sold for $32.50. Uh, and here's another one of my favorite varieties. I've talked about this one on uh, a few dozen occasions just this year. I even sold probably about a dozen of these this year as well. Uh, 1956 D over D RPM. This is number one or the FS, what, 501, if I'm not mistaken for the um, uh, Cherry Picker's Guide variety. But uh, check that out. Your secondary uh, Denver Midmark is punched westward of the primary in this case, uh, this is a very nice early state of this one where you can see all of the all of the attributes of both mint marks on there. Uh, this one ended up as a $33.90 sale. And uh, the biggest cut of the week has to be this 1980s era Lincoln Memorial scent. This one is a copper. Uh, it looks like a copper, so it's probably, it narrows it down to a few dates, right? 1980, 81, and 82. Uh, it looks like a large date, 82, if that were the case. Uh, but wow, I, I mean, s some people have said, yeah, you can't really find these things in change, you know? And I'm like, look at this one here. Do you think this one is circulated? Quite a deal. Like, you know, this has been through many dozens of hands over its lifetime. I mean, let's get real. If things like this exist with this level of circulation wear, I mean, look, it's not the most best example either. You can see all these little um, brighter spots here, which are the high points of the coin. That's where more wear happens. And it's a really dark patina coin. So, you know, what else is there to say? How, how can I win you guys over when I say, look at a coin like this, and you tell me if you can't find this in circulation. You're going to be, I'm hoping you guys feel bad about it, because it, if you do that, then you can realize that the prospect of finding these out there is real. This coin, monster sale, $240.48, seven bids, very nice, very nice sale. Uh, pretty cool one here. This is an off-center struck Roosevelt dime, but the seller had mentioned it was also a rim clip, which it could be. It could be a rim clip. You see this flattened edge. It could be a straight clip or a curved clip that's filled out a little during the strike process. Uh, but what it also could be, there's a saddle strike. If you guys don't know what a saddle strike is, it's uh, two coins that are butted up against each other. So there are actually, there's probably another matching coin 
uh, that goes with this one. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. What you don't see is like another corresponding like strike on another coin. Uh, the, you just have this one here. Uh, pretty cool, uh, you know. And um, again, it'd be nice to, if this was a saddle strike, which, you know, it's a remote possibility. I think it's more of an off center with a straight clip or a curved clip. Uh, but a pretty neat piece. Uh, $52.99 was the sale price. So here's our last Kennedy half dollar. And I'm telling you, man, the, the money is strong on Kennedy half dollar errors. Here is a wildly, wildly just struck through 1972D. Crazy. Look at the reverse on this thing. There was just a massive amount of grease all up and down these dies. Like it's like uh, whipped cream frosting on a newly baked cake. That It's that, that thick on there. Um, so when it has to strike through all that grease, you're going to get a tremendous amount of loss of design details all throughout the coin. And you can see it both on the obverse and reverse of the coin. Big sale, $93 was the sale price on this. The uh, seller did actually weigh it and thought maybe it was a slightly underweight planchet at 11.2 grams. It's close, but it's within mint tolerances. Another cool cut, and again, this is a coin that's circulated quite a bit. 1984 Lincoln Memorial Sign. You can see the uh, the double cut, very small, over the word trust on this one. Yeah, that's all, guys. Look how small and tiny that is. It's very. It stands reason to see why this one is in this particular condition right now. Is because nobody noticed it. Uh, but at the same time, if you're an eagle eye like I am. This is naked eye visible. You could see this without the aid of a magnifier. Um, so, wow. This this coin surprised the heck out of me. $313.60 was the final sale price. Someone actually hit the buy it now button on this coin. And now they own probably one of the neatest looking cuts. You know, they don't have to be large and in charge to be something special. This one has double cuts essentially on there. So, pretty cool piece. And then finally, um, we're gonna, this is the last coin, ladies and gentlemen, on a PCMR in 2022. And, uh, yeah, it's a Tuskegee Airmen. I, I mean, did, didn't we kind of like end up 2021 with either like a Tuskegee Airmen or a crowned eye chip? I, I don't remember. I'm sure we had a few of those. But this coin is on the list for a completely different reason other than the strike through that you find on the buildings of these things, right? You remember those? Those were all the rage one year ago. Um, this one, however, has a massive die chip above uh, the one of the airmen's goggles. Uh, you can see that right there. It even goes into the word wars. These have been actually a very strong seller since they've been found. I've seen some examples sell in excess of $100, believe it or not. The, this is kind of like um, the uh, the version of the crown die chip that you see on the Washington Crossing the Delaware version of those coins. And uh, we're seeing it true to life, ladies and gentlemen, on this one. Which, by the way, the coin is uh, pretty well circulated. You can see all the nicks and little marks and stuff all throughout the coin. Um, yeah, yeah. Here's a little close up in case you wanted to see that. $65, ladies and gentlemen. What a great amount of cash. Uh, 48 total bids. Uh, indicating just tremendous interest. And again, interest all across the board on all the coins on this week. There, were, there Nobody really let up off the pedal in terms of uh, uh, listing coins and buying it either. It's like the market is just ridiculously stupid right now. Um, and I'm spelling that <clears throat> S-T-O-O-P-I-D, like stupid. Uh, it's, it's dumb, uh, just the amount of money people are fetching for some of these coins, but that's the market, right? You know, it ebbs and flows. The market's at its high right now. It will dip eventually. Will we, will we see that in 2023? Remains to be seen. All right. It's, it's going to be an interesting year, uh, where the, uh, the possibility of no major mint errors coming out in 2023 could be the case because that's what the mint director says. So we'll take her at her word, and uh, yeah, that we're starting to begin to see it, and we're going to see if it's going to follow through through the new new year. Um, yeah, stay tuned. We're we're going to do kind of like a uh, a quick little uh, 2023 intro primer 
uh, probably sometime next week, just kind of discussing some key dates um, for the year. Uh, we have a pretty big coin show. The Florida Fun Show is in January. So if you guys are looking to get back into the swing of things with the first big show of the year, that's the big one to be on the lookout for. That's coming live from Orlando, Florida, like the same time every year. Uh, always a big show. Uh, and then we have the marquee releases of the brand new Lincoln Scent, which will be end of January. Um, those bank boxes are going to be huge. People pay anywhere from three to five hundred dollars on um, uh, on day zero for those particular boxes. So if you do come across them, um, it might be a worthwhile flip. You never know. Um, and then we also have the the uh, startup again of the American Women Series of Quarters. That's going to be uh, uh, happening again in 2023. Some nice designs, by the way. So we'll talk more about it as we go. We're going to be back on live. Um, I think we're going to be back on live uh, January 2nd, this Monday, on the Live Coin Q&A channel as well. We have our, uh, we're going to continue on our Monday live streams throughout the, uh, the, ne the new year. And uh, we personally invite you guys. Uh, so, yeah, come check us out. 5.30 Pacific, 8.30 Eastern. As always, that's the normal time every Monday night. If you have coin questions, go ahead and send them to us. Our um, email is info at livecoinqa.com. Would love to hear from you. Uh, and, but that's going to go ahead and wrap it up. I love you guys. Thank you again for such a great year. You guys be safe tonight. Um, enjoy your hangovers tomorrow. I already said that. Uh, yeah, and do all the things on screen. I'm also on TikTok, by the way at Blue Ridge Silverhound. So that's it. I'll see you guys next year. So long.